Hey guys, Yar here, and today I wanted to show you Cosmastigus monstrabilis, an ant like stone beetle that lived in mid Cretaceous era, from family Staphylidae, subfamily Sidmaninae, and Mastigini tribe. You might agree with me that it looks very bizarre. Are these scary things mandibles? Nope, it's antennas of this beetle, with specific adaptations to help it hunt. Obviously, I've got interested in it because of few reasons. It was discovered in amber, it's extinct, and it was a predator. A win-win-win situation to get my attention. But before getting to the predaceous adaptations, let's look why it's called a ant-like stone beetle. Looking at modern counterparts that still thrive, we can spot a bunch of similarities with ants. Long legs and long antennas, and these beetles are able to mimic ants perfectly. That's because these beetles are living in extremely close contact with ants. They move, behave and interact with other ants from the colony as if it was a part of the colony, and that's because they kinda are. They even get the scent from other ants and get indistinguishable from other members of the colony. I would guess they use ants for overall protection and, and maybe even to obtain food. And now let's go back a little and appreciate the chance to inspect these tiny extinct predators in all of its glory, because thanks to Ember's preservative qualities, every single hair on the body of these specimens are visible. Coscomastigus monstrabilis display morphological modifications on the antenna unknown among living ant-like stone beetles. Compared to other members of its family, Coscomastigus has extremely large body size reaching up to 1 cm in body length, where modern counterparts on average have around 2 mm body length. It also has elongate clubbed maxillary palpi and toothed mandibles. The long legs are probably suggestive of active and rapid locomotion. Like their modern counterparts, Coscomastigus likely moved quickly on substrates, likely the forest floor. The hind wings are not visible and the elytra are strongly constricted basally, tending to indicate that Coscomastigus were likely flightless, similar to many still living relatives. Most important feature is its slender and highly modified antennas that functioned as net-like trap. Such antennal modification is analogous to that of modern ground beetles from the genus Loricera, a group possessing a specialized antennal settle trap exclusively to capture springtails. So these antenna adaptations are obviously convergent evolution, the kind of adaptation that unrelated organisms independently evolve similar traits to adapt to similar necessities. So we can only assume that Cosmastigus used net-like antennas to capture specifically springtails, as these insects was very abundant in the Cretaceous era, judging from the fossil record in Burmese Ember. There are currently 14 described species of springtails from the Cretaceous era, and they are often found in big groups inside of Ember. So, who are these magical creatures called springtails, aka columbolas, and why both Loricera ground beetles and Coscomastigus had to develop net-like antennas to catch them? Springtails are usually only a few millimeters long and are one of the most widespread and abundant of terrestrial arthropods, and is the most diverse group of Entogonapha the sister group of insects. Most iconic thing about springtails is they are one of the fastest organisms on Earth. They have spring-like tail which they use to push away from the ground when in danger and with immense velocity fly away from the danger uncontrollably. To get more information about springtails I suggest to take a look at Ant Lab's video about them, it will be in the description. This footage is from that video which is very interesting by the way. So that gives us an idea why would these beetles need a net. Springtails developed its spring to fly away from danger and beetles developed nets to trap them while they are in the mid-air. 
Predator prey interactions are a critical component of ecological and evolutionary associations shaping the success or failure of major lineages. I love how we could study absolutely different modern species, in this case beetles from the genus Loricera, to understand why and what for Cosmasticus would benefit from its bizarre antennas adaptation. Credits and huge thanks for the team of scientists that described and researched Cosmasticus monstrabilis. I'm lucky to own two specimens presumably of Cosmasticus, but I haven't identified them with experts yet. But with my amateur eye, they are for sure from the Mastigini tribe, and I will cherish these pieces forever. So yeah guys, this will be it for the video, I hope you did enjoy it and learned something new. New discoveries in Ember never cease to amaze me and push me to appreciate and love it more every day. If you did like the video, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, I've got bunch of Ember and Fossil related content already and see you next time, bye!